And so with that being said, I will call the first individual to be heard. Uh, please set three minutes on to the timer. Um, Madam, I don't want to call her Madam Secretary, but. No, she's over there. Okay. She, Madam Secretary, and the first person to be heard for public comment on item 13 is Mr. Paul Mozina. Hey, I hope you reset that clock for me, man. Did you start? Did you start it when I was sitting no, in my chair? No, you, it don't start until you start. Until you start spell, after you spell your name. <laughs> my name is Paul Mozina, M-O-Z-I-N-A, and uh, I have some prepared comments, but I, I'm going to have to put them aside because the the way that this discussion began is is so disturbing. You're you're de you're describing a situation where you have a board, legislatively mandated to provide oversight for the police department. But yet you're saying that this board has no control over the executive director and the staff. They're, they're two different entities. The FPC board is one department, and the staff and ex under executive director Aldrete is another department. And the board apparently, according to the city attorney's opinion, which was rendered on May 3rd of, of 2019, the board, you all have no authority to tell your executive director or staff what to do. And this is a man, what we see happening right here today is a manifestation of just how messed up this is. You all want to get an investigation done. Your mandate is to o provide oversight of the police department. Now you need, this, now you need to go into action. And what are you doing? You're reaching, you're reaching out for, you want to hire an attorney. You want, you need some staff. You have a staff, it's called the FPC department. And until the mayor got the authority to appoint the executive director in 1988, the, the, the control of the board over the executive director and the department was unequivocal. For 103 years, the board exercised complete control over the executive director of the Fire and Police Commission. And then when, when, that, when that decision was made in 1988, the uh, Common Council requested an opinion from the uh, city, to, um, th they requested an, uh, an investigation, and by statutory construction of that language, the, f the board retained the authority to, to uh, direct the activities of their chief investigator, which was their chief uh, examiner, which is another name for the executive secretary. They keep giving this person new names, it's the same person. What I'm trying to say is, th when that legislation passed and gave the mayor the, the power to appoint the executive director, you all retained the authority to tell that person what to do. And because you have re let it go, you've relinquished it. And, and with the city attorney's opinion in May, you basically said, we give up, we have no authority over our executive director or our staff. And do you see how pathetic, I'm sorry, I'm, re I'm, I'm upset about this. You see how pathetic this is? You, now you need to investigate the chief and you have no staff, you have no money, you have nothing. You had a, you had a department and they've taken it away from you and you're not standing up and fighting to get control of your department back. That city attorney's opinion is rubbish, needs to be thrown in the wastebasket, and you all need to reassert your authority over the executive director and the staff and, and start telling them what to do. It, you, you know, you come and begging, begging for, for money and staff, but I, I, that, I just want to let put that on the record because, you know, this is, the, you I guess I ran out of time, but, but this, is, this, is, this is why we're in such a mess right now, because you have lost your, we've, the board, the FPC has lost its way completely. And, if, and until the board steps up and reasserts its authority over the FPC, the city, the Milwaukee City Charter, Chapter 314 says the executive director serves under the direction of the board as their principal staff. If y'all if y'all want to uh, say that the executive director, that the board has no authority over the executive director, then change the city ordinance so that it's sympathetic with that. You're, you're you're acting, behaving in complete contradiction to the city charter, which the city court of ordinances, which says the executive director serves under the direction of the board. Period. Uh, you know that's the city attorney's opinion is is is, uh, is a bunch of junk, and, and and until you get yourselves in charge of this department again, it's going to be nothing but craziness and messed up. Uh, uh, I, I, I thank you for letting me go over. I had some comments. I'm going to give them to you, and uh, I really appreciate your time. Thank you, Mr. Mozina. Uh, are there any comments based on Mr. Mozina's comments? Yeah, I actually have a question. Yeah. 
while I've been here, th it, one person say is, I want to know, let's do an investigation of what people say. Because when a city attorney or a person who is supposed to have the info says that's the way it is, then you got to go and research it or, or something. So now I want to know who is the person who knows who's supposed to do what. Because it's either a state statute or it's something that North was made up or what's going on. So who do I ask? That's all I want to know. Because Kay asked the city attorney. So who do I ask? Anybody in the room know who you are? City attorney is here right now. Anybody know? So um, you want to speak to it, please? Yeah. By the... I would say that the opinion speaks for itself. Um, also, this uh, we're on a item number 13, um, so this specific issue was not noticed for this meeting. Okay. Okay, can you notice it for the next meeting? Because I really do need to know. Well, you, I think everybody needs to know because it's too I'll, much. I'll have, the, I'll have the, uh, the record reflect um, Commissioner Wilson's request. All right. Uh, the next person to be heard for public.